Uh, so let's let's chat for I don't know, 10, 10 minutes or so. Any questions? Put it right in front of you. <laughs> I'd be interested to hear what other people think I might be getting at mm -hmm. in the structure. Um, um, well, there's a sense in which whatever we say is um, a recitation of words and phrases that have been said before. That's one thing. And there's something... Um, I'll say that. Um, there's that. And then another thing is about um, thinking. And um, I'm <coughs> kind of experimenting with thinking aloud, although it's more an experiment with writing aloud, because I think maybe I do think aloud, which is that words that have been spoken by others or that I've read um, resonate and echo and reverberate, and they come to me, you know, like yeah. thoughts come to me, they come from elsewhere. So there's a sense in which um, I'm going back, well, I don't know whether I'm going back, but um, I used to know Anglo-Saxon, and I've forgotten how to speak it, um, and I've forgotten what I knew, but um, <laughs> they're, they're talking in Anglo-Saxon is there's a word hoard. Right, and you dip into the word hoard, and that's what I like to do. And so it's a way of kind of um, um, challenging the presumption of a kind of ownership and originality to um, thinking and speaking. Yeah, so that's one thing I'm doing. Yeah, you're asking yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the times when I do this, you know, the, the stuff just comes to mind. Stuff I think, oh, you know, what's that Buck Mulligan thing? So I have to go off and find it in that case. But sometimes things come to mind, and they are poorly remembered citations. And I don't think there are any in here. This was a, quite a difficult thing for me to do, because all the, apart from networks, surprisingly, Nothing I read about network sticks in my mind, but quite a lot about net and work stick in my mind. Yeah, uh, and the orality and agency was almost impossible to work with. Um, but um, the miscitation is very productive exercise. So in a way, I kind of want to. I, I do. I, I usually indulge in miscitation, and it sets. It sets the resonances going. It lets the words echo. It kind of releases them from the constraints that scholarship obliges us to um, attend to. You know, and yeah. So I don't make any pretense of setting up the context. In fact, I'm trying to, in a certain way, I wondered afterwards whether I was in some... I don't know if this is true, but I, I'm trying to um, create a different context for circulating some stuff. Yeah. I think it's excellent. And the, 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 the term that you use is really interesting. Parasite. Well, it works beautifully mm. in all ways. Beautifully, yes. Uh, with indeed. the S-I-T-I-N-G, because you're re -sighting. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I kind of have, have um, I've also done it, and it's really interesting how we're on the same panel. Because <laughs> I've also done it in my paper. I call it the unacknowledged. But yours is much better. I'm going to use it yeah, from now on. Yeah, a little <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good it's role as credits from everything that has come in to, yeah, yeah. to build a new, yeah. uh, whether intentional or not. I find that <coughs> I tell the students about it, and it, it liberates them. You know, they don't feel so... You know, you said that you have all these citations. <coughs> when, when I have to write these things up, there's f phrases of four words that have to have a little entry, you know. Because the, the part where I say, so let's listen, yes, let's listen, that's actually from Derrida. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit at the end of mm. one essay he, ha he has. It's in, um, it's, in the, it's in the collection called Points. 
And that's just stuck with me all the time. Let's, so let's listen, let's listen. Yeah. But also you, the, you take some kind of, you know, a life of its own, the way you use it. With yes, them. and I want to release <coughs> them. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it connects to other things. I've done, I have a, a whole passage here that, that's marks from last year's tuning speculation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes? Plagiarized, yeah. word for word. Yeah. <laughs> but if you begin, if you begin <coughs> by saying you're parasiting, then yeah, no, it's uh, it's kind of like a <laughs> an internal joke or something. And it, it also allows me to um, <coughs> put things together, like to compose them um, in ways that, if you were being faithful to the context or the original intention or any of that stuff or the authority. You, you couldn't do. Mm. So, so it helps to make a different kind of um, fermentation. Yeah, actually. Absolutely. I hope. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Francis, you have a, did you have a question? Oh, yeah. No, this is for Paul. Can I take mm. um, I was just wondering um, if the earbuds are a kind of a, a sign, like a design like, like they're a sign of an audiophile listening <laughs> well, that would be cool. <clears throat> but you just need to see them complimenting you, going like this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the red ones. Well, yeah. I, I don't think uh, audio files would... You can buy very expensive buds, but I don't think they would be keen on those. So the bud or speaker is already... Uh, the, like the Beats by Dre are an intrusion into the audio files world. They're a kind of uh, subversion of it. It's like, look, we're walking around with these. <gasps> Oh my God, I've dreamt of that, but never been able to. Um, oh, I had a much more interesting answer. Oh yeah, so I did write about the iPod uh, a few years ago in a French thing in that way. Yes, the science thing from a personal kind of memory. I remember doing uh, traffic surveying in London and when my uh, tape or CD finished playing, leaving the headphones on so no one would ask me any questions. Um, <laughs> and it struck me that the iPod does that, or any, any listening device, but it, it does something extra to that. So it's, it's a resistance to the external sound world. It's setting up an alternative to what's going on. Uh, kind of thinking in our terms, Janet Cardiff kind of uses this mm. sort of idea. But what if you didn't do what Janet Cardiff does, which is record, you know, I am now walking around a Ray music space and you have the headphones on. What if you took one of her recordings and took it to a different place? The iPod listening, especially because you have so much stuff on it when they were first, people were stockpiling everything on. And, Oh man, I've uploaded all my stuff. I didn't do any of that, by the way, just clarifying. Mm. <laughs> but it, it actually heightens your uh, self reflective subjectivity. So that sealing off is resistance. That's quite a nice thing. It creates danger because you're walking along a street in a city where uh, you might get hit by traffic or some emergency might happen. You don't know anything about it. But also, you're reflecting on your own listening and, oh, look, I've got that track. Or you're letting the machine in the case of the stockpiled iPod, reflect your subjectivity through your listening choices, but kind of re-DJ for you or something. Mm. So yes, in quite complicated ways, it kind of spreads out that the absence of the external world has um, later effects. Uh, just a quick random comment slash question. Have you seen the Zero Theorem? Mm -hmm. no. there's, a, there's a shot in it um, where they're at a party and everybody has earbuds in. There is music playing generally, but yeah. presumably nobody's listening to it. And they're like all kind of rocking out to their own, <laughs> to their own iPods yeah. in this space and not really talking to each other. Well, when the silent disco started, everyone was mm. listening to the same stuff. But apparently you go to silent discos where you can pick from a menu and say, so I'm going to a rock disco. So you're dancing to different things. Yeah. Oh. Well, in yeah. Barcelona, they have nightclubs where you go in and it's packed with people and yeah. there's no music because yeah. yeah. everyone is listening to whatever they like yeah. uh, and, and being in this space together. It's really interesting. Yeah.
So that's an interesting thing I could have talked about and didn't. <laughs> but the sign and disco has changed from being a communal quietness where we were all tapping into the same thing or not. And, hey, did you just hear that? Well, that was amazing. And now it's uh, like having uh, multiple kind of uh, choice entry. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, psychosis, I suppose. But Oh, yeah. He used to walk around the stethoscope tied to a tape recorder. And this was before the Walkman, or it's just a regular. And the Lurzen revises this thing when the Walkman turns out. Because it's, it's transporting psychosis throughout the world. This is uh -huh. an entirely good thing. <laughs> but I was going to talk about the beat and ace slash sociality. Because that's a nice example. On the one hand, it's asocial. I don't think any were actually from Lacan. I think they were okay. all from people. There's stuff from Joyce and there's stuff from Lacan. Was it, yeah, on seminars, uh, on Joyce's seminar, on Lacan's Lacan seminar, yeah. on Joyce, he talks, he says a strange thing. He says, it's a funny thing about dance is that it doesn't serve the body. He says, it's, it actually doesn't serve it. It doesn't work with it. And he coins this weird, this very funny phrase called condensation. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 the body often in so its relationship to dance generates a kind of eurythmic or arrhythmic symptom. Which is, uh, uh, so there's a resistance to the asociality of rhythm. Mm -hmm. So it was that connection about how this drum beat, either as a signifier or a, a signifier of a certain type of rhythm, that connects us to the, if you like, what we call the machine uh, or a different kind of social network. And it's, and it's different. The naturality of an or different kind of can, or is, would it be helpful to think of hyperrhythmia as a kind of symptom, a sort of condensation symptom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shall I? I don't know. Do you, you want to start? Yeah. Uh, um, no. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. That's a really, these are really good inter interconnected questions. Um, yes. Partly my work I it comes f exactly from that problem of rhythm being hijacked as a concept uh, to mean uh, symmetry, the regularity of the beat, um, to be attached to biological rhythms and, flow, and flows and organic rhythm. Lefebvre, Lefebvre writes uh, about, um, in his rhythm analysis, um, texts he writes about isorhythmia and arrhythmia, um, to always related to, to the human body. Um, the musicians, for, 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 we have a few around, so I better watch out what I'm saying, uh, <laughs> have also kind of always been attached to, to this notion of rhythm. I'm just wondering what else um, it can do in its more asymmetrical, uh, non-human um, theorizations, I suppose. And so, sonic fiction, Kojo Eshen, for example, writes about poly polyrhythms, um, and I think it's, it, it, there, there is a, this is partly what I was hinting at in my paper, there was a moment in time in the 90s because of cyberspace, digitalization, automation, um, the music changing, electronic music and so on, um, that, that rhythm takes on a different 
a, a, a different life and we can look at it in a different way and we can understand it in a different way. Um, and I think it's a, it's a concept that has been not just misused but maybe unused. <laughs> Um, so it's worth, con it's, it's worth thinking what else it can do. And rhythm analysis as a method for that matter as well, which is my next idea thing. <laughs> I'd like to say something. Um, I really like that condensation, particularly in the context of what I presented, because the thing I said, the garbage men are talking trash. And this is um, an excerpt from a poem by a guy, a guy called Jeff. Dovin, I think that's his name. And um, the name of that poem is Dichten, the German, equals Condensare. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And something I didn't mention before is that I just pick up, I take note of these words in the stuff I happen to be reading. I don't, for the most part, go and look for things that include orality agency. I just, every, what I happen to be reading, so that's sort of what restricts or determines the context, yeah. And then if I draw a blank, like with orality, I go and look on the net <laughs> and come to the Scrabble site. <laughs> yeah, no, not look on. I don't really have any time for that. But I am thinking about um, uh, the apocryphal uh, story of Bataille dancing with Sartre. That's all. I have nothing more to say. Or Mondrian <laughs> dancing, or Mondrian dancing to jazz in his own studio, which he likes to. I'm, I'm saying apocryphal is good. It's code, coding for good. But the 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 beats don't come in. Beats don't come in a signifyingly, particularly in the form of those headphones. They carry masses of stuff that people are joining in on, and not least of which is. These have been designed in a particular way to join in on particular kinds of music and illustrate that you are, which is their bass heavy. And one of the nice things in Steve Goodman's book, which is sort of linking us back in, following your excellent tracking there, uh, is Steve Goodman's Sonic Warfare book, which is not always good, um, is about how Western avant-gardism and theory has gone against the beat and has gone against bass. And what he does with that, those are the bits that I love in that book and that well, there's something interesting there. And then Brandon LaBelle talks about the spaces between mm. beats, which gets a bit zen, but I think is quite nice, which is the structuring mm. of beats sociality is not in the moment where beats happen, but in a wider kind of uh, rhythmical pattern made up of spaces. Mm. And the in-between, yes, the yeah. unsaid in-betweens. Maybe just one more question. It's one just tiny. It's, it's, uh, which orality is not in the OED? Like the the AU version. Okay. Yeah. So we have one more question. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Not in the big one, the slightly yeah. smaller one. Uh, uh, when you you had it up for a while. Um, yeah, the, the, my question is, I'm really intrigued by people want to spend money on listening, not on music. Mm. Those are two industry questions. Yeah. I'm curious if you can speak more about that. It strikes me that no one is spending as little as $71 on listening today absolutely no one that you wouldn't even be able to find you don't need to go looking for the average spend if you uh, include all the machinery the net access that someone is spending not necessarily individuals but the overall spend is colossal and that's not including people going back and buying vinyls or whatever um, so it just strikes me that I'd be surprised if anyone spends as little as that on listening but it's a kind of genericized listening <laughs> rather than uh, on specifics and that's a kind of interesting resistance we're talking about resistance earlier and maybe resistance isn't like oh you should pay artists or you should buy vinyl or support local artists maybe that's all nonsense the resistance is somewhere quite peculiar and that's in the embracing of something more weirdly social maybe we should probably end actually because we have lunch to get to <laughs> yeah, what do we have to say about lunch? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we can I want some? Yeah. Yeah, we're right now. <laughs> All right.